reach out and we'd love to connect with you. As we begin, um, you can also find a few uh, goings on on the last page of our bulletin. And Stephen has a short announcement. I invite you to watch your e-news this week where you'll get more information about this. We're going to be offering house blessings for all households and particularly households that are complicated by workplace and school place and all kinds of different functions in this time. And so we're setting up and helping you with some resources to bless your home, which you can do all by yourselves. And you can also have the assistance of a priest who can stand outside your house and give you supplies like blessed water and can also bless your home from the outside. So just watch the e-news as we plan for home house blessings and invite anyone who's interested to share in the blessing of their own home during this next season of Epiphany Tide. Take me to the water, take me to the water, take me to the water to be baptized. I love Jesus. I love Jesus, I love Jesus, oh yes I do. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Savior. Yes, he is. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, yes, glory, hallelujah, to be baptized, Ooh, to be baptized. Come to the waters. All who thirst. Come and listen to the voice of God. Rending the heavens. Speaking God's promise. You are my beloved, in whom I delight. May the grace of God be with you always in your heart. May you know the truth inside you from the start. May you find the strength to know who you are. Find something beautiful. May the grace of God be with you always in your heart. May you know the truth inside you from the start. May you find the strength to know you are part of something beautiful. And I thought that I saw the light shine. Thought I saw 
the light shine your side star that I saw the light shine thought I saw the light shine may the grace of God be with you always in your heart may you know the truth inside you from the start may you find the strength to know you are part of something beautiful May the grace of God be with you always in your heart. May you know the truth inside you from the start. May you find the strength to know you are part of something beautiful. And I thought that I saw the light shine. Thought I saw the light shine. Yes, I thought that I saw the light shine. Thought 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 I saw the light shine shine. Thought I saw the light shine. Thought I saw the light shine. I thought I saw the light shine shine. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Hover over us, God of hope, as you hovered over the waters in creation. Shelter all who begin again today. Kindle in us a confidence in your restoring, peacemaking love. And move us to share your love with courage and joy. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll say the song together. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in beauty and holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, 
Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sister, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sister, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good starry crown. Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brother, let's go down. Let's go down. Come on down. Oh, brother, let's go down. Down to the river to The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. As the sun sets on Saturday evening, Sabbath draws to a close. The Jewish people celebrate this pivotal moment with the Havdalah, a ceremony with candlelight that recalls God's separation or division of light from darkness and waters from waters in the creation. Sabbath gives way to the first day of the week, which for Christians is our Lord's day, but for the Jewish people, it is an ordinary work day. 
So on both ends of the Sabbath, at both its beginning and its end, there are rituals to mark this important reality, the reality that this day, the Sabbath day, is different. It is not a usual day. And so the Jewish people hail its arrival and they mark its passing. One thing is not like another. Havdalah. This word shares a root with the word mavdil, the Hebrew word we hear today in the creation story as the English word separated, as in God separated light from darkness. Light is to darkness as Sabbath is to a work day. One thing is not like another. Then in Mark's gospel, Jesus sees the heavens torn apart by God. The Greek word we translate as torn apart shares a root with our English words schizoid and schism. This word for separation takes on a harsher, rougher tone than the Hebrew mavdil. One thing is not like another. And so God tears them apart. God the creator seems more demonstrative now, more startling and deliberate as Jesus rises from the river. God tears apart one thing from another. Jesus rises from the river, river, yet another image of separation. The English word rival owes its history to the word river. Rival comes from rivalis, which is an adjective that simply means water brook or stream. But rivalis as a noun means a source of water that is claimed by two people. And so if you and I both draw water from this one river, then inevitably we will become rivals. Do not despair. Here ends my word study safari. But I do want to invite you to hold three words together today as we stand at the edge of the Jordan and we watch Jesus rise from the river. Mivdal, schism, rivalis division, tearing apart, rivalry, separation, tearing open, competition, and a controversial and powerful figure emerging in the midst of all this conflict, rising into the middle of those who are opposed to one another. Jesus rises from the waters that flow just outside our front door here at Grace Church. When we baptize, we recognize in these living, moving, flowing waters, the presence of Christ that rises up. But what does this mean? It might be easier to understand the meaning of baptism if we return to the first century rivers where people were first baptized, including Jesus, Today, when you stand on the western bank of the Jordan River, east, northeast of Jerusalem, you are standing in the nation of Israel. But you can see, and if you tossed a small stone, it would easily land on the kingdom of Jordan, directly opposite you on the eastern bank of the river. Sometimes you can see people coming down to the river from that side often to experience the very same thing you are there to do. Like you, they want to step into the same exact river that Jesus graced with his presence centuries ago when he submitted to John's baptism and then rose up from the water just as the heavens were torn apart. Baptism is easier to understand if you can imagine a river with two banks and two streams of people descending opposite each other to the same rivalis, the same source of water. Now, imagine that all of these people and the river and the riverbanks and Jesus himself, imagine that they are all inside you. 
Within your own self, there is a river. It flows between two banks, two groups of people, two ideas, two competing pressures, two priorities, two desires, two you name it. And so part of you wants to take what you need to care for yourself. And another part of you wants to help your neighbor. Jesus himself rises from the river that flows between these two desires. Part of you needs to grieve the real losses and injuries you have suffered. Another part needs to move forward from them and pursue new life. Jesus himself rises from the river that flows between these two needs. Part of you is motivated to fight injustice and oppression with vigor and righteous anger. And another part is motivated to empathize with the oppressor and to try to gather even him into God's healing embrace. Jesus himself rises from the river that flows between these two motivations. In all of these, neither bank of the river is fully bad or evil or wrong, and neither is simply automatically good or right. Life is complicated. Jesus rises in the midst of complicated life, and our baptismal identity becomes for Jesus a way to locate himself right in the center of our lives, our hearts, our hopes, our desires, our conflicting passions and longings and needs. And now, perhaps we are ready to imagine the river of baptism in a larger sphere. It is the river that runs within an individual, yes, but it also runs between you and me between us and them, between team blue and team red, between the guy I voted for and the guy you voted for, between and among citizens of this nation in a time of vicious rancor and violent insurrection. The river runs between any two or more people who in one way or another identify with those who are on this riverbank over and against those who are on the other riverbank. Jesus, in baptism, rises from the water that flows between us all. And so Jesus rises from the river, and we can see something redemptive or life-giving in the beliefs or behaviors of our enemy. Jesus rises from the river, and we can see something problematic or unjust in our own beliefs or behaviors. Jesus rises from the river and all of us can see, maybe for the first time, how the river and its two banks are wildly diverse, but also one thing, one organism, one ecosystem of flourishing life. Jesus in baptism does not show us how we are all the same. Again, one thing is not like another. In baptism, we see not how we are the same, but that we are all one. Christian and other than Christian, people of faith and faithful agnostics, people of all colors damaged in different ways by white supremacy, transgender and cisgender folks, queer and straight, Jew and Greek, male and female. As Paul so memorably tells the Galatians, all are one in Christ Jesus. Now, in our baptism, we do not interpret all this as a triumphalist, exclusivist claim that all human persons should become Christian or are Christian already, but they just don't know it yet. No, that is not the way of life for us. I say it this way, for me, a baptized Christian, all are one in Christ Jesus means this. Jesus rises from the river to show me who I really am and who you really are and how life on God's good earth is and how it should be. Jesus does not rise from the river to demand that everyone become a baptized Christian. 
God is never that small. Jesus rises from the river so that those who are baptized can recognize Christ himself in every human person. Baptism isn't about the formation of an exclusive club. It is precisely the opposite. Baptism is about opening the whole thing up. Today, we will renew our baptismal covenant, a practice that may worry some of us because it appears to threaten our deeply held value of inclusion. What, we rightly ask, what about those who are not baptized and those who do not ever want to be baptized? Answer, they stand on both riverbanks alongside us. For them, perhaps Jesus rising from the water is happily not how they see things, not how they understand what God is doing with all this life that flourishes in this lush river valley we call earth. But for some of us, and for us as a spiritual community, we are invited to see in baptism the presence of Christ rising among us, changing us, moving us, improving our vision, strengthening our hearts, readying us for loving service to all people for God's glory. One thing is not like another. And often enough, God's good creation is riven with conflict. But God in Jesus rises up in the midst of all this complexity. God in Jesus rises up within us, between us, and around us. Look, can you see? This river is filled with life. Let us celebrate the gift of baptism and renew our baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God? We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of all humanity. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman's womb, servant of the poor, who is tortured and nailed to the tree. Knowing full passion and deep sorrow, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will one day be known. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church. She is the spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? We will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, Repent and return to the Lord. We will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? We will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? We will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? We will, with God's help.
God alone, my soul in silence waits. We pray for all who follow Christ and for all people. Give us grace to work together for the life and health of the world. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. We pray for the nations and all in authority. Give them courage so that justice and peace will rise like the dawn. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. We pray for the earth and for all living things. Give us wisdom to restore the land, the rivers, and the seas. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. We pray for this congregation and the communities in which we live. We pray especially for our ministry partners, St. Luke's Edible Hope, Kitsap Rescue Mission, and the Salvation Army in Bremerton. Give us the spirit of understanding and lead us into deeper fellowship with one another. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. We pray for all who are sick and suffering, for all who are lonely, and for all who are any, in any kind of trouble. Give them the comfort and strength of your healing embrace. We pray especially for those on our parish prayer list. We pray for healing for, for Joanne's family, Savannah, Tom's brother and brother's wife, Mike, Meredith, Jesse, Tom, Mark, Liz, June, Janet, Megan, Austin, Richard, Melinda, Molly, Nikki, Nick, Carson, James, Barbara, Mike, Eli, Edith, Sarit, Claire, Thomas, Jim, Rich, Len, Richard, Susie, John, Carol, Lisa, Marguerite M, Ken, Chris, Kevin, Dina, Grant, all who were injured in the attack on our nation's capital. We pray for support for Joanne, Martin, Karen, Jill, Mary, Austin and Meredith, Dan, Norm, Marge, Paul, Terry, Geraldine, Patrick, Lila, Amelia, and Hannah, Beth, Patty, Ridge, and Ben, Gina and Joseph, Dave, Henry, Lucia, Mark, Lindsay, Garrett, Cindy and Shelley, Beth and Scott, Steve and Debbie, Steph, Bonnie, Robert, Susan, Randy, Meredith, Grant's family, the families and friends of those who were injured on the, in the attack on our nation's capital. We give thanks for the life of Louise, Lillian, April, John, Jim, Bud, Sandra, Alec, June, and those who died in the attack on our nation's capital. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Put your trust in God always, O people. 
pour out your hearts before God, for God is our refuge. We pray in for the, for thanksgiving for those who have died and for those who mourn. Give us your consolation and unite us with the whole communion of saints. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore us, restore God our soul, show us a light to find our way, show us a light, show us a light, show us a light, us a light to find Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the love of Christ be manifest in you, that your life may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. As we prepare to share uh, milestones, baptisms, and anniversaries in chat, I want to make sure to mention that in all of the excitement renewing our baptismal vows, I forgot to um, uh, create space for an offertory. So if you'd like to offer a gift, that link should be in your chat window and is also on Grace's website under the Give tab. At this time, I invite you to share a milestone that we can recognize together. And Kim will read them aloud. Morning, friends. Uh, Linda sharing that Norm Bruce turned 80 yesterday. Jane Crane says Andrew Steiner has a birthday today. Eric Matthews says he had a birthday Saturday the 16th and turned 64. I assume that's Eric. 
Um, Stephen sharing that his granddaughter, goddaughters, Jubilee and Salome celebrate their baptismal anniversaries this week. Barbara Hume sharing that her sister Sharon turned 70 on the 8th and received her COVID vaccine on the same day. Elizabeth Rochford Height shares that their daughter Tobin turns 35 next week. Edith's grandson Henry turns 19 today. Bill Busenberg's grandson Sebastian in New Zealand is 13 this week. Mark and Russ are celebrating their 10th anniversary this week. And Gabrielle Boucher celebrated her 30th birthday yesterday. Gary Lagerloff is giving thanks for the life of his father, Eric, who died 51 years ago yesterday. Dorothy Matthews says, uh, Jim, her brother, has a birthday on January 11th. Thank you, friends. God, we give you thanks for the beauty of life around us and for the relationships with the sustain, that sustain us. We pray your blessing now on all those mentioned, on those celebrating birthdays, on those remembering loved ones who have died, on those celebrating anniversaries. And we ask that these celebrations would uh, kindle in us your joy and give us hope to continue forward, trusting in your goodness. Amen. God grant them many years. 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 Now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. If you're able to stay on, we'll split up now into breakout rooms for coffee hour conversation. And I invite you to do that. Thank you for being with us. <laughs>